let's get on uh, to uh, some very pressing issues we have here at home. And uh, first up, Isabel, uh, well, let's remind ourselves uh, of uh, what uh, Keir Starmer, the, he's the Prime Minister, isn't he? Change. Uh, <laughs> uh, we need some change, mate. We yeah. need some change on our streets because our streets are falling apart at the seams. Anyway, he gave a uh, sort of address to the nation today, standing in front of Union Jacks, uh, giving his assessment of what's been going on. We've seen the riot in Leeds a couple of weeks ago. We've seen the riots, of course, in Southport. Uh, they were happening last night in Hartlepool and outside his house in, near Downing Street last night. So here's... Keir Starmer with his view of what's been going on. Because let's be very clear about this. It's not protest. It's not legitimate. It's crime. Violent disorder. An assault on the rule of law and the execution of justice. And so on behalf of the British people who expect their values and their security to be upheld we will put a stop to it. I want to thank all of the police officers across the country who have already, as they do so often, stood up to intimidation and violence in the past few days and in doubt throughout the summer. Well, that's uh, the Prime Minister. And uh, I'm going to remind you of Yvette, C Yvette Cooper. Uh, this was her after the Southport riot. Uh, now, this is a Home Secretary who, when Leeds erupted uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, in what you might call an ethnic riot, it was to do with Roma gypsies, uh, there were Muslims involved, uh, I mean, some uh, locals as, as well. Uh, but this was what, what you might call an ethnic riot. Uh, th there were no police around at all. But nobody can find much trace of the Home Secretary talking about that at all. But when white, uh, alleged right-wing white, right, <laughs> start that again, right-wing white thugs uh, rioted in Southport the other night, oh, my God, she was very angry about that. Listen to Yvette. Well, I've been talking to West Yorkshire police officers and also local community leaders about the action they are now taking in response to those unacceptable scenes of disorder and criminality that we saw last night. Uh, the community is working very closely together in response to what was a, a local child protection incident, but it's really important that the community can feel safe on the street. So so to be fair, uh, that was her talking about Liz. We did manage to find something. Note the calm demeanour. Uh, here she is talking about uh, what happened in Southport the other night. So appalling to now see those same police facing violent attacks from thugs on the streets who have no respect for a grieving community. It's a total disgrace. Uh, frankly, this is a time when everyone should be showing respect for a community and for the police. See, the difference is that the people in Leeds were not uh, what she might call white right-wing thugs. Uh, there she is talking about uh, her hated enemy, the right-wingers. I mean, there's a real marked difference, isn't there? There's a real marked difference. And just when you think Labour might just outfox their political... Uh, rivals by being a bit more balanced about this because that would be the smart political thing to do no they have to go down the route of harping on about the far right as if everything that we have seen in the last few weeks is all down to some thuggish far right people listen i've spent the day today in leeds yeah. which is the which were the the first set of riots you mm -hmm. know the early riots the big riot at the start of what feels like a lifetime ago this horrible series of uh, disorderly uh, protests across the country was in leeds and where, where was the outrage about that from the Home Secretary? Where was the outrage from the Prime Minister about that? Where were all the dozens and dozens and dozens of arrests? You know, last night outside Downing Street, uh, there were over 100 arrests. The police appeared to be arresting virtually indiscriminately, so much so they actually arrested a TV presenter who was in a suit reporting on the events. So uh, there definitely seems to me a real story here of two-tier mm. policing. Um, I have to say that the 
footage that we've obtained from Leeds, which I can't wait mm. to share with our listeners and viewers, uh, probably next week now, because there is so much to yeah, prepare yeah, on yeah. that, um, is shocking. Yeah. It is. I mean, uh, there was a, a... People were... There was a lady up there who was arrested... Um, uh, for protesting to the police, saying, look at what these people are doing to our neighbour. And she was arrested, uh, but the people actually doing the damage were not. Last night, the famous, uh, already famous clip of a woman being arrested who was just standing around, and as they arrested her, uh, I think we've got that. Uh, she was protesting, she's got a pacemaker. Let's have a listen. You've run into me. You've just all I've got a pacemaker. Hey, I've got a pacemaker. I've got a pacemaker. And they've just arrested me for walking up here. No, it's section 35. Oh, because they're... You want to do them any time? That's why I'm trying to lock them so they can stop getting tight. Well, actually, you're really tight in them. Well, I'm not. You really are tight in them and you're really making me... You're what? So can you relax? You're joking. Five seconds. Are you joking? I've never been arrested in my life. Madam. I have... Don't you, miss... Don't you... I have never been arrested in my life. I'm 73 years old. And I have come here because of them babies who's died. And I am being arrested. Now... Back in Leeds a couple of weeks ago uh, when, uh, as I say, uh, predominantly ethnic people rioted, uh, they may be British but they were of ethnic origin, uh, the police backed out for about four hours and let them get on with it. None of them were arrested. This is two-tier policing and it kind of feeds into the fact. Uh, by the way, here's to the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail challenged the absurdity of what the police and the CPS, the Crown Prosecution Service, were trying to do uh, by not naming uh, this 17-year-old suspect who is uh, accused of committing those appalling murders and uh, stabbings in the dance class in Southport uh, uh, a few days ago. He wasn't going to get named. He was going to be protected by anonymity. The Daily Mail challenged that, and to be fair, uh, the authorities uh, did buckle and uh, we now know uh, that uh, the 17 year old um, let's stop calling him boy he's 18 and six days time yeah, by yeah, the way yeah. and he's already been warned by the judge that that has quite big implications yeah. uh, well his name is axel ruda kubana uh, as we know uh, from a Rwandan origin family, uh, we believe he was born here, uh, but his family lived nearby in a village called Banks, I think, nearby to Southport. So thanks to the Daily Mail, trying to stand up for your right to know, our right to know, we do find out who this guy is. And uh, But if it was down to the police and if it was down to the CPS, we'd have probably never found out. I give you John Venables, the murderer of uh, Jamie Bulger all those years ago when he was about 10 years old himself. Uh, he's now 41. He is still protected by anonymity. Uh, the, the protection of people like this is an outrage, if you ask me. I think that at that age, you know, there's a real... Actually, there's... Protect there's them a, at 10, but not at 41. There's a pattern here. You know, there have been a number of truly horrific violent crimes recently perpetrated by teenage uh, culprits. And in time after time, the identity of those teenagers is protected for their own good. And you kind of think, well, hang on a minute. There's something really wrong here. You know, I'm all in favour of giving people another chance, a future or whatever, but I'm afraid there are certain crimes that are so heinous that we need to know who did them in order to be able to draw any lessons that we can. You know, sometimes maybe there's nothing to be learned, mm. but there really, we can't learn lessons if stuff is hidden. And actually, uh, in the decision to name uh, the accused in this case, mm -hmm. um, the authorities acknowledged that by that wall of silence that had existed mm -hmm. up until today uh, had allowed for speculation in a very unhelpful way to creep in, misinformation and so on. They accepted exactly what you and I were saying last night on the show, which is that if you, if you refuse to release details, it looks and feels like a cover-up, mm. and into that vacuum people start mm. putting their own theories, and it's very, very unhelpful and potentially dangerous. And we still don't know what this guy's religion is. I uh, should point out that only 2% of the Rwandan population are Muslim. Uh, most of them 
them a Christian, actually, but we still don't know what his religion is. But those uh, people rioting in Southport uh, the other night were under potentially the misimpression that he was a Muslim. It, he may well be not be a Muslim. He may well be one. We don't. We still don't know. Uh, but by creating this information vacuum, yeah. uh, people will speculate, and this is what happens. The police, this is 2024. This is the social media age. Sticking with their analogue systems, oh, we don't reveal that, he's 17, and oh, uh, no, we don't tell you what re religion is. Well, you know, arguably, the police, with this wall of silence, are responsible for what happened in Southport. And once again, Isabel, let's get this straight. Uh, if Starmer and Cooper and all the lefty gangs want to say, oh, that's just right-wing thugs, I think that w the sentiments that those thugs were expressing wrongly and violently are held by millions of civilised, decent citizens in this country who fear somehow this country is being being Islamified, they fear they're losing the moderate and sensible country that they grew up on. This is what all this unrest is about. It's not just a few uh, right-wing thugs and uh, Keir Starmer and Yvette Cooper are doing us such tremendous disservice by by their failure to confront this. I, you spoke about that so powerfully there and you are absolutely right and in trying to dismiss it as a handful of right-wing thugs Keir Starmer and Yvette Cooper and their colleagues betray a total and utter lack of understanding about how people are feeling up and mm. down this country. I talk to people from all over. They contact me, uh, they contact uh, the, our politicians, our non-Labour politicians, in a state of utter despair mm. at what they feel is happening to our country, at the divisions that are coming mm. in. You know, the Labour government likes to pontificate pompously about not sowing division, not not fueling uh, discontent and so on. I tell you what creates division. What creates division is allowing the mass importation of people who have no desire to assimilate with our culture and who quite simply don't speak English. They will come here and they will be here long term and they are not being encouraged or indeed forced to actually get part of the community to, to actually break down those barriers, they are living in silos and they are not actually mixing with the rest of the nation. And that is a very, very unhealthy situation. Yeah, as I say, if they don't confront this, if they're not honest about what's going on, they're not going to solve it. And when Keir Starmer says, this is not protest, it's crime. Well, yes, uh, a lot of these protesters do, certainly in Southport, were committing crimes, they were breaking the law, but Keir, it is protest. You know, you can't say it's not protest. This is hopeless. Confront reality or we're all lost. It is as simple as that.